This is the east edge of Poland, one of the most ethnically diversified territories in Central Europe. The Belarusian border lies a few miles away from here. For the north, one can find the Lithuanian border. The town Bialystok developed fast after the railway between Warsaw and St. Petersburg launched in the middle of the 19th century. Many wealthy Jewish businessmen operated textile industries and exported large quantity of commodities to the nearby Russian Empire. Before the Second World War broke out, up to seven different ethnic groups lived here in Bialystok. Yiddish, Polish, Russian and Romani were equally important. The famous international language Esperanto was constructed here by Mr. Zamenhof at the end of the 19th century. This is one of the most important evidence for the prosperity Bialystok enjoyed at the end of the 19th century in the beginning of the 20th century. And at that time, this factory, the science factory, employed between 300 to 600 people in different periods. And this windmill today is one of the two main buildings which are left of this gigantic building complex which belonged to Isaac Stein once in a time. Thanks to the private textiles and garment manufacture enterprises, most of which were operated by the wire connected jewels, Bialystok was in fact a middle sized prosperous town with a metropolitan atmosphere, and its population gained fast despite its remote location. Neoclassic architectures with lavish decorated facades and the well planned green parks in the city centre reminds me the quality of life the factory owners must have enjoyed. Like the other important industrial towns in Poland, the socialist movements were very active amongst the well educated Jewish labourers were influenced by both the religious congregational doctrines as well as the Marxist novelties. Underground newspapers were printed in both Hebrew and Polish and distributed to factory workers by the members of the active clandestine union organizations. This is the formal Bialystok's intellectual places. People who live here are often state employed. They could be teachers, they could be singers, they could be artists. And today, this is really just a very wonderful resident place with so many fantastically constructed wooden cottages. And each and every cottage are decorated according to the owner's own mind. And this is actually a very magical moment of this trip. If you really define so-called common senses, you start to find there's so many fantastic pearls that lie ahead of you. And they really, each and every cottage in this area has its own story to tell and has its own enlightenment to share with the rest of the world. In comparison with the nearby Stalinistic apartment buildings, wooden houses in these areas are both refreshing and somehow delicate, abide most of which are poorly maintained. This area is a sarcastic symbol that survived both the communistic Aaron bulldozers and the invincible hand of the capitalistic market economy. Today, the wooden cottages are evidence of the incredible Polish creativity. Many construction solutions are probably results of lack of modern construction equipment and necessary material supply. The asymmetrical facades 
or the broken windows on the attics prove that ordinary people can make intrepid solutions if they're set free from the central constraint. The output may be different from the initial design, but is hardly less perfect per se. I'm actually in Skansen in Bielowiesa. Bielowiesa is quite a very special place in Poland in terms of its religious belief. This region is primarily the Russian Orthodox region and most people who live here traditionally believe in Orthodox, not the old believers but the quite common Orthodox. And icons behind me are some of the finest creation in this region and what strikes me is the fact that all icons are made with such bright colors it's really light up such a quite humble wooden cottage and what i love the most are the very beautiful handmade fold costumes despite the lack of modern amenities they still could produce such beautiful clothes with such nice patterns and it really impresses me very very much just imagine not traveling now but traveling around in this region 200 300 years ago things must be quite different people still dress up in such beautiful dresses and go to their churches to pay their patron to the Holy Bible. I mean, it is a very mysterious place and sometimes it almost feels that I will never understand the essence of it. But on the other hand, this is exactly why we are traveling to learn by observing things that are different. Relationship between Russia and Poland is somehow a very delicate subject with many polemic aspects and goes from redemption to contradiction and back to hostility repeatedly the last 200 years. After the Second World War, the Russian minority has been roughly kept between 10,000 to 13,000 people, most of whom has been resettled. Eastern Orthodox believers are still impreponderous today. In this lovely Skansen, we met a very well-educated, pious Russian guide who loves the Russian literatures, as well as the Polish poetry. Being a Russia, on the Polish soil entails great advantages, according to her. The obvious dichotomy between two cultures is the incentive for asking important questions. Commonsensical replies do not always satisfy her, but coalescing perceptions of costumes is by no means a possible solution. What a beautiful place to contemplate about the meaning of life, which is what the Russian thinkers always do in the history. And to be honest, I think this is one of the most romantic places in the world. The view from here is definitely tranquil and fantastic. And there's a very special sand in this place. It's a kind of mixture of the dried grass, the pond, and of course the dried wood in this place. And I start to think about if life was really better now than how it was before in an age when electric equipment was not known by ordinary people and we already gaze in this wonderful surrounding and start to ask what, how to define the quality of life. Is it money? Is it wealth? Is it position? Or is it the instant feeling of tranquilness, happiness and most of all the kind of satisfaction you only get when you see such a beautiful view in 
a day like this. When I was a college student many years ago, a wonderful friend of mine is a smart and thoughtful Polish girl, who introduced one of the most poignant authors in the world to me, that is Hendrik Sienkiewicz, who conducted many monumental historical dramas in a time when Poland was part of Poland-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the kind of Polish national psyche, which I have found from the night of the cross, is filled with hope, but also anxiety. At the same time, the strength of this great nation is really its enormous ability to bounce up again from all kinds of terrible misfortunes, without losing their pride and confidence. For the Polish, the horrible histories of Russian and German invasions are somehow their scaffold toward a brighter future in which Poland again will be the most emblematic nation upon the European continent. The obvious star attraction of this region are the majestic lowland bison oxen. Like many huge mammals, bison live with a relatively large drove and are often skillful swimmers, which is impossible to conjecture. Due to its size, bison has very few natural predators except grey wolves and bears. These lovely creatures are a few of the last bison oxes which are not tamed by human and they live here in these green lungs of Poland and in the nature states. They do live in the forest just a few miles away from the zoo but unfortunately this is probably the only chance we will catch a sight of those lovely creatures. This old forested region was once the royal hunting ground when Poland was part of the Russian Empire. Their family often invited other royalties to hunt the huge bisons every autumn. Many famous painters were paid to depict this festival moment and took their easel packages with them in order to capture the beauty of the wildness. Once there was a lavishly constructed residence palace which could accommodate many people. The National Park of Bielowieza is Poland's oldest national park which is founded in 1921 and its observation and bison breeding centre is currently administrated by the Polish universities. The Belarusian border lies just a few kilometres away. Our guide of this private evening tour is a professional botanist who is interested in studying the close relationship between the vegetation and the fauna in this forest. According to him, bisons are known for roaming great distances while they're looking for food in the wild. They are used to all kinds of weather conditions, from the scorching hot summer afternoons to cold and blizzard winter nights. And like many wild animals, a bison drove is often led by a bison cow. Boars often remain solitary and join the family group only during the mating period in the summertime. The gestation period is approximately 250 days. Like many huge mammals, a bison cow only deliver one baby at a time. A Jewish storyteller once described Poland with the following words Cultivation, old civilization, beauty, history, surprising turnings of streets, shapes of vulnerable cottages, lovely aged ears, unexpected and gossamer turrets, steeples, the glows, the antiquities, vast. The east edge of Poland is a fairy tale 
a legend and a whimsical myth which consolidates the existence of the huge diversities in terms of its past as well as its future. When we see a stork flies towards the pale blue coloured sky from a narrow chimney, my eyes are filled with tears. I was deeply touched by the rustic and vigorous beauty of this region.